We're live now. We're live right now, ladies and Hello, ladies. everyone. Morning from Manila and good evening. So from friends are live. live. <laughs> good morning. Actually, morning to you guys. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sharing the live uh, right now. Yeah, I'm sharing right now. By the way, this is Amir. And this is me, Stefan, and this is Drew, and our special guest. Guys, introduce our very special guest. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to start it now, okay? Take it away, Amir. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning from Manila. Welcome back again to another episode of Mrs. Olgy Beauty Talks. My name is Amir Emir. I'm with Drew Francisco and Stephen Diaz. Um, okay. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Hello. And without any further ado, let me introduce to you our very special guest all the way from Puerto Rico, the most beautiful Miss Supernational 2018 for me, Miss Valeria <laughs> Vasquez with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Um, yeah, so nice course. to finally be here and I'm honored to be part of the Beauty Talks with Miss Asology. Yeah, it's finally. It's also an honor to, be, to have you in our mythology. So, Valeria, how are you now? Well, I'm fine. I'm happy I'm done with school for now. And I'm just heading into summer. Restrictions are going a little bit down in Puerto Rico. So I can finally enjoy the tropical island and tropical paradise we have here. Um, and yeah, I'm, get, I'm ready to head on to other things in life than just studying. <laughs> Oh, nice to know that. Yeah. And you guys, how are all of you? We're good. Yeah, just woke up. <laughs> just woke up. Last night, we had an episode of Physiology last night. And yeah, Drew, you have a question? Yeah, so uh, during the lockdown, some people said that they have unlocked some new skills. Do you have anything to share? Like something that you have discovered about yourself? Mm. Hmm. I mean, it's not like I've been able to do much because <laughs> uh -huh. literally since the lockdown started, I've been just studying all the time. Um, it mm -hmm. got a little bit harder than just studying at school because we had a lot more stuff to do online. So um, I didn't have that much time, but I think, um, well, I've been kind of seeing makeup tutorials and stuff on internet and I've been trying to perfect and change the way I do my makeup every time I do mm -hmm. it. So I think that's maybe... A skill that I've gotten better a little bit <laughs> uh -huh. when I have free time but yeah I mean now maybe on in, in just like few more weeks and months I can tell you maybe something new <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> nice to know but you yeah. really don't need that much makeup Valeria you're so beautiful yes thank you <laughs> and I, I observe Thanks. you have a curly hair <laughs> right now you're gonna make me blush even though I have foundation Oh, sorry. You have, you have like really, you have a shorter hair right now. Yes. Oh, not really. It's just that it's in. in oh. In... <laughs> <laughs> uh. It just goes in scales. <laughs> yes. But okay. oh well, well for sure during the comp well not competition during my um trips I did have a little bit of much more hair and longer hair though it was supposed to be the same length, but a little bit more. So maybe that's why it looks longer because I had extensions. You had the extension, yeah. I, I was thinking about that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but now it's all natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like sometimes it's when you have extension, it's really hard when you take a shower and you know. Slightly. Oh my God, it is. It actually is. <laughs> Just doing a bun up in my head is a little harder because it's heavier. So that's why when I had them on, I wouldn't do that much updos anyway. I would just let it down, curl it, or straighten it, and that would pretty much be it. <laughs> By the way, before I forget, you said that you were studying. So what were you studying specifically? What course is your, what major? So I am doing, well, finishing my bachelor's degree on, on medical technology. I started doing it on biology, but later on, while I was almost finished, <laughs> I decided to change. Um, and I had the credits already to go into um, medical technology. So I decided to do it. I applied and I got to 
um, the best medical technology school in Puerto Rico, um, which is something I'm very proud of. And uh, so I am pretty much three classes away from finishing all the theoretical part. And then I think it's about 600 hours of practice hours in the labs. Practicum. So I'm almost there. I'm almost done. <laughs> I would have been done, but Supra came along. That's okay. Yeah. Opportunity yeah. came and still the study was able to wait and now it's paying off. Yeah. I have a question yeah. related to that. I was that. actually this close. <laughs> I was actually this close to not going to Supra because I oh. wanted to finish my studies first. Oh. This close. I this think <laughs> that's what Drew is going to say, right? Yeah, I, I have a, a, a question related to that because um, in your uh, video bio in Miss Supranational, you said that you almost gave up studying about medicine so and the, until you became a volunteer for during the typhoon uh hurricane maria so can you tell us more about that and the change of heart yes so um I, w I was in biology because i wanted to head on to um med school um later on i decided to still be on something in, in med school well medical related i'm still not sure if after i finished my bachelor's degree on medical technology, I'll go on into med school because I have a lot of interests right now. <laughs> um, but I still want to finish there. And the reason I decided to continue on to something um, that was related to medicine was because I was able to live like what how grateful people are when you help them out. For the Hurricane Maria, um, I was as a volunteer translating in the like we had this disaster teams that came on from um, USA. And I worked with several different groups of them because they changed them like every so like two weeks or so. But the people were like so grateful that we were just translating to them whatever the doctor was saying because they spoke English. And to be very honest, even though we are a US territory, not all of the population in Puerto Rico know 100% English or are very, um, um, they don't really understand all. They can sometimes get a little bit of it, but not everything. So we were there to help them out. And people were grateful, even even though I was just like, we, the volunteers, most of us were all um, aspiring to get into something for med, med school or like whatever speciality you wanted. And the people would say to us, oh, thank you, doctor. And we were like, well, not yet, but thank you for that. <laughs> so how grateful that people were the blessings all the time that people were like oh bless you for helping me and all of that stuff were the things that were eye-opening to me and I was like okay so I'm really caught up for this oh and seeing the things I saw <laughs> and not fainting um so um those were the things that I was like okay so I'm ready for this kind of job I like what I'm doing and what I'm seeing and I like helping out people so that's why I decided to stay on the path to get to somewhere on med. <laughs> yeah, so that's a great okay. story. There's something that yeah. we, we really didn't know and yes. we'll to dig deeper because of course, well, during the pageant, not, not all stories are being told. So now mm. is really a perfect opportunity for you to share that, that part because I personally didn't know about it. I just knew like the, the the tip of the iceberg but there's really more story into that one yeah and it was awesome like literally all the things that i was like all the things that i was doing um while in maria um besides trying to get back to work while it was kind of like opening up as little by little mm -hmm. um all my free time was spent in the hospital there helping out volunteering um since i started to then i got more hours in my job and i couldn't be there that much so i decided to just like put a stop to it but it was very interesting i, I saw a lot of cool things <laughs> okay well, now valeria cool before we <laughs> i'm sorry no i, I okay. was saying that cool if you're into meds some ah, people okay. it like you girls or something <laughs> but i was like <laughs> okay valeria before we move forward to uh pageant related questions we want to hear any message from you for those, uh, for the for all the people who are facing global pandemic right now. Any message? Well, basically to just stay as calm as possible. I mean, eventually everything will blow out and we will be back to normal, normal little by little. 
Um, we, but we just have to be patient and really get into the rules and listen to what um, experts are saying. Not everything that you see on Facebook or Instagram is real, so you have to find a real source. <laughs> um, <laughs> but use your masks, use your um, hand sanitizer, and even more, more important than using the sanitizer, wash your hands because that's even better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just about being patient and waiting for it to just go away or for a vaccine to come up or just something that will bring us back to normal. Yeah, I'm coming from a medical technologist in the future. <laughs> are, are you, are, by the way, are you going to become a doctor, Valeria? Is that their long-term plan or what? Um, it's part of my plans, but I mean, I still have to wait it out and see because I have a lot, a lot of more things that I'm interested in. Okay. So sadly, I do not have a double nor I don't have the power to like multiply myself into multiple people <laughs> and do them all. But we'll see. You, you spoke that uh, advice from a medical point of view. Point so. of view. <laughs> Trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so now, uh, a year before you competed in Supra, you were volunteering for Hurricane Maria. And then almost a year after, you were competing in Supra. So what made you decide that you really wanted to join beauty pageants? So in Puerto Rico, the beauty pageants and the modeling industry are a little bit... Um, like together, even though they're very different. Yeah, they're connected. Um, even though they're apart um, and very different, they're somewhat connected because um, all the girls that are models usually know who are the queens and we all pretty much know each other every now and then from backstage or whatever. So we know who we are. <laughs> um, so I've been following pageants since 2012. Um, I think the one that I follow the most, well, is the most common one, which would be Miss Universe. But then on, I learned about the other pageants that are in the industry. And I've always liked, um, from all of them, I've always liked Supra because people say that it's more like model-ish, though it's changing. Um, but people say that usually Supra looks more for like a model type and it's not so Miss, it's like a mixture. Um, so I've been, I've been always interested in it. And um, I've always had the approach to join pageants, but I was never confident enough to do it because I thought that if I had the full time to prepare myself, I would do it. If not, I was not gonna do it. And so mm -hmm. then came along my national director, Miguel, and um, asked me if I wanted to join. Well, he asked first, mm -hmm. like, it was a weird thing. Like he talked first with my agent from my agency. Um, and so if I was interested or somewhat, cause he had only seen me in runways, but never had met me nor talked with me. And mm -hmm. my, my agency director was like, sure. Yeah, let's, let's meet up. Let's set up a meeting let's uh, interview her. So you can see that she can actually do it. Um, but first I was supposed to go to top model of the world. Oh. That because my my national director has that license too, so um, he first uh, offered me top model of the world. Then after our meeting, everything changed. Then <laughs> he called me later on and did like this very bad joke because I was still meeting him and he was pranking me. Um, but he said, um, "Oh, Valeria, um, I cannot send you to top model of the world because I think that you are not." Um, worthy of it. I was like, <laughs> hey, it was actually a good decision because you just won the title of Miss Supranational. No, you <laughs> would, no, the Miguel was just pranking her, you know, was just, I just was, he was it. pranking me. He was yeah. pranking me for top model of the world. He was like, no, you, you, you're not worthy to go as <laughs> Miss Top Model of the World in Puerto Rico. I was like, what? But in my head, I was like, but our meeting went so well. Like, what is happening here? And then he was like, yeah, but anyways, we still want you to work with the organization. And in my head, I was like, doing what? <laughs> and, and immediately he said, yeah, as our Miss Supernational Puerto Rico. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, no way. Mm. <laughs> um, so I, of course, I said yes. Um, and we started working towards it. And then I got to Supra. Yeah, you deserve it. 
Really deserve it. And Jarelis <laughs> got the Miss, you know, Miss International Puerto Rico. The two of you, right? You and sorry. you and Jarelis. Wait, repeat the question. I'm sorry. Um, you as Miss Supranational Puerto Rico, and then Jarelis mm -hmm. Salgado was the Miss International. Ah, yeah, 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 Jarelis. Yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. two of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so. curious to know because uh, usually girls who first came, first uh, went into modeling and then say that they had sort of uh, a, a lot of hard time um, transitioning from modeling to pageantry. So was there also a same, same experience for you? Yes, it was. I mean, at least for the runway part. Because of course, mm -hmm. if you see my runway on the, on the pageant, I am not like this super miss runway. Like I don't do a lot of the hip movement. I didn't have that much classes to prepare myself and change my runway because I was studying a lot. So it was a little bit hard for me to find time to practice my runway. Um, but definitely I think the biggest difference is that the runway part. And I've always said that modeling, in modeling you pretty much sell the clothes that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, with attitude and, and that, but when you're a miss, you're pretty much, I don't like to say it like this because I, it sounds weird. It's not like selling yourself. It's like selling the brand that you're working for. Like you're a role model or a, a, like a spokesperson for a brand. So it's totally different. It's not just about what you wear. It's about how you are, what you represent as the organization. So it comes with a lot more work than just trying to sell the outfit that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely the runway was the hardest part for me. The rest, I'm just like this, as you can see. <laughs> like, I'm social uh -huh. butterfly. <laughs> Drew actually uh -huh. heard a lot of stories about um, models could easily transition into beauty pageant. And that is two different things, actually. From beauty queen to transition to modeling, it's it's really hard, especially here in Japan. If you have like a background of being a beauty queen, usually modeling agency will just like cut you out because they already, really? yeah, because they know that a beauty queen is different and then a model is different, really different. So yeah. I feel like it's a lot harder to change from model to queen to than to queen to model. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but for, because a beauty queen is not really a profession. Like you mm -hmm. will get it for one year. Modeling for mm -hmm. some people, for some women, especially, yeah. it's really a profession. It's like it runs after one year, two years, or even longer, right? So yeah, yeah it's uh, they really have. Sometimes they really have to choose whether to pursue beauty pageant or just to totally pursue modeling, and forget about beauty pageant at all. Okay, now we move forward to questions that is related to Miss Supranational because I am more excited about asking those questions. And Andre, no, but... <laughs> probably, you know, maybe Andre is watching. Shout out to Andre Slay. Hello, Andre. Okay. Uh, Valeria, I just want to ask, um, during your Miss Supranational competition, who was your biggest competition? This will sound like a typical Miss answer. Um, but definitely, I think that the biggest competition I had was myself. Yeah. Um, not only the girls. Wait a minute, wait. <laughs> and that's the correct um, answer. Don't because, worry about it. That's the correct one. <laughs> because um, honestly, like all the time, it's a little bit harder for you to like keep yourself going and like not hear rumors, not let yourself focus on whatever top or hot pick came out. Um, mm -hmm. not, not that, oh, hey, hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> not let yourself um get like too too frustrated if something happens during the competition that you were not planning so i think that keeping yourself like in track and doing what you know you're supposed to be doing um it's a lot more harder than just like seeing oh this girl has better hair than me this girl has a better face than me this girl has a better runway than me of course you can kind of like notice them um, but definitely, I think the biggest competition was me to myself. Hmm. Very good. <laughs> yeah. same, thing that I've also, same thing that I tell almost everyone in the beauty passion industry, the girls that I train and then I talk to, like, you know, your biggest competition is always yourself. And yeah. definitely. You, you nailed it. But I just want, I'm just, I'm just also curious, if not Valeria, or if not Miss Puerto Rico, <laughs> 
What do you think? Well, well uh, the, yeah. There were a lot of girls that were very good. Like, of course, we all know Venezuela was very good. Um, we also know Philippines was also very good. Um, I also told my national director, I like he can um, confirm that I told him if Supra wants someone that's very spokesperson and like really doesn't have like, it's not shy about talking to people or like going out there and it's like a very social butterfly, then USA talks more than me <laughs> and he was like how can you say like really usa talks more than you because i talk a lot like i talk a lot this is why i love interviews <laughs> but um, definitely um she is a very social butterfly she has obviously a very good runway and everything so i told him that and when at the end it was just the two of us when yes. i finally talked with him he was like oh, you were so right i was like i know I'm seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I really appreciate because um, you're one of the most well-spoken beauty queen from Puerto Rico. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I think that's that's one of the few things that pageant fans do not know because we only see Miss Supernational in photos and a few videos during during that, that time. But most pageant fans didn't realize that most of the girls in the top five are actually like like to, to coin your term social butterfly. So I think Mr. Supernational is gearing towards that direction where they want a queen who is more sociable. I think it has been like that since 2016, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. you know, with Srini D and then came Jenny Kim and then Valeria. Like a lot of pageant fans did not did not see like us for example we do not see exactly what is going on behind the scene except when yes. boss man tells us something you know <laughs> this is this is what I tell the girls all the time when I was like going to national pageants or if someone asks me for advice or something um don't pay attention I mean sorry to you guys you know I love you guys but don't pay attention for like to the hot pigs that any yes. social media could do I mean. Of course, in the case of Supra, well, we had Paui there and everything, but still, even though he's there, he doesn't see everything. Like, he's not in the interviews, for example. Um, so, they can see stuff, but they don't see everything that's going on, nor know exactly what the organization is looking for or wants. So, don't, like, let that get into your head. Like, don't turn your game off just because of it. Sometimes we tell the girls, the pageant girls, right, Drew and Amir, like, the... Yes. To the uh, to the pageant contestants, the hot picks are not for intended you. Intended for the fans. For the, <laughs> fans. For the fans, yes. <laughs> but some of the girls, some of the girls are just so tempted to read it, you know, and see how they are ranking, right? They yeah. went crazy whenever a hot pick came up, and I was like, "Oh, uh, sure, okay, <laughs> fine." <laughs> Everyone is waiting for that, actually. <laughs> it's like, even oh, Pia. Even Pia words back had to make a secret account in Missology just for her to see what is going on and how people are actually related. Do you have an account in Missology for Missology, Valeria? <laughs> Don't tell me you also have an account or some. No, Maybe I use my Maria's normal account. account. <laughs> <laughs> I use my real Maria's account. I don't. I don't ah, okay. I don't have have we own. have so many Puerto Rican writers and pageant experts who are actually really great um, contributors in the Missology forum. And shout out to all of them. You know, they don't tell us the real names, but they are there. Un beso enorme para todos ellos. Yes. Drew. And now, um, you were crowned during the tenth anniversary of Miss Supranational. And it was so special that the judges during that year were former Mr. Supranational winners. So how does it feel to win the title in front of all those women who came before you? I feel like it had more meaning, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was getting the 10th crown. Um, and I feel at the same time, since they're all, they have already been through the job, they know what goes down in Supra. And they also did our interviews. So they kind of know what they're looking for. It's not like when you go ahead into the competition with a, a judging panel that's full of random people or sponsors that maybe have a different view about what pageantry is about or don't really get what the organization is looking for. So doing it 
with all of the queens, I think adds a little bit more meaning and maybe I, in my personal opinion, <laughs> I feel like it has more, um, how do I say this? Um, more strength, more, more, it's, it's, yeah. it's, that the decision was like better. I mean, like, cause they know yeah. what they're looking for. So I feel good that they feel like I was the one deserving of the crown um, because of all the things that they had already seen. Yeah. Okay. I think, they thought it was I think also that job. it was so, yeah, it was so, so special. Yeah, it has it has uh, more weight. I think that's what your your the word. Yeah, more, more weight. More yeah. weight. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to know. I would like to think because, it in uh, Spanish. Tiene más peso. I'm curious to know because you've seen like eight out of the nine former winners during that year. Who among the winners, like when you saw saw her, you, is, you in, initially thought about it like, oh, she's really a queen. Like she said, the R of the Queen, who among the former winners? Um, to be very honest, this is not to not like say anything about my sisters, but <laughs> uh -huh. um, I the only moment I saw them like up close was for the interviews. And to tell you the truth, I was not focused on that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I was focused on, since they were in groups, I was trying to focus on what I wanted to say because we already knew what the the questions were pretty much going to be. Um, so I would I wanted to get everything straight in my head because I knew what I wanted to say, but I was still having problems in, on the way I wanted to say them. Um, so I did not focus on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the end of everything, I loved uh, after it, getting to know them a little bit more. Um, they're very unique. They're very different in their own ways. Um, I loved, uh, I spent a little bit more time with um, Karina, sí, de Panama, from Panama. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, she was very sweet, very lovable, like really like right after I won and everything and I was finally able to go eat. Um, she talked to me a little bit about how was it, how was it going to be. Um, she was asking me how I felt and everything. So she was very nice. Um, I also talk a lot with Jenny and she has an amazing humor. Um, oh, yes, so she's I don't, funny. She is just funny. Yeah, she is so funny. Like, really, I was all the time laughing around her. She is ridiculously funny. Um, uh, but yeah, I so I cannot say like, oh, she looked more like a queen. Because at the end of everything, they're all they're all queens and they look glamorous yeah. at, the, at every single moment. Okay. Okay, Drew. So we move forward. Now, during the time you won the title, okay? So I just, because for me, you're one of the most traveled Miss Supernational winners during your time. Okay, so among those countries you visited, uh, which countries is most memorable for you? So again, not a misanswer. <laughs> um, <laughs> but definitely, um, I have parts of every single trip that I remember a lot. For example, I always mention uh, one of the things that shocked me the most was when I went to Indonesia, like the pageant lovers, they're like crazy for all the queens and everything. And to see that people would take a little bit of their time to just bring you some little note of something written for you um, or just a little gift or whatever, or just to see you on the lobby of the hotel. Like they even found out like the information and everything um, <laughs> and waited for us. Um, it's like, to me, that's very sweet and it was so surreal. Like I was never alone until I got up to my, um, room and closed myself in it. <laughs> um, so that's definitely something I will forever remember. Like I felt like a rock star. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You're a superstar there in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> especially, especially in Indonesia, they are also pageant fanatic. And they, they are, are so crazy for pageants. It's amazing. Oh. The Indonesians are a big fan of Miss Supranational. Yes. So um, definitely that's one of the things I remember a lot. Um, let's see, from South Africa, for example, I loved uh, all the contact with nature I had there. They mm. took us to like safaris and all this stuff, like to see the animals in like reservation, conservation, reservations. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a lot, there's a lot. Oh, and for in Ecuador, yeah, it was Ecuador. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Ecu yes, Ecuador. yes, Ecuador. <laughs> in Ecuador, um, there was like this orphanage, um, and we went there to see the work that they do and all of the thing. And the little kids just started like as soon as they came into the room, they started screaming, "Queen, queen, queen, queen!" So to me, I was like shocked. If you see the video, I'm here like standing uh -huh. still, like. Oh, hi, hi. Because first of all, I was shocked. And second, I was on heels. No one told me to go on, <laughs> on sneakers. <laughs> so the kids were coming to me and I'm on big heels and I'm like trying to not fall. <laughs> um, but it was like, those are like little things that are like, they make a good impression on you. They leave a stamp mm -hmm. on you. So I don't have just one. I have many from all my travels. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, Related to the travel, because uh, I remember reading one article during your reign, and then you said that you never thought you'd be on the same stage as other queens from other international pageants. And then during, when you were in Indonesia, you shared the stage with the then reigning Miss Universe and Miss International. So how was the experience? It was definitely a realizing moment. There is even a video of when I was doing my fitting for my Kevaya. Um, where I start crying because mm -hmm. as soon as I looked myself in the mirror, I saw like b b besides the gown being beautiful, um, like it was made for me because I am like one of the queens. So it was like a realizing moment. And then I thought like, oh my God, I'm also, also on this trip, on the stage and everything with Miss International and with Miss Universe. I am a queen too. <laughs> so um, it was definitely one of the realizing moments like after I won, because you know, like it takes a little bit time to sink in. Um, mm. And in that moment, it was like, yeah, it's you. <laughs> okay, I, I'm just also curious, um, how was the reception in Puerto Rico when you came back home after winning the title? Miss well, definitely, um, definitely, definitely, Sorry. <laughs> Definitely, it was good. Um, not a lot of people here knew much about Supra, but as soon as I came here, I had media weeks. I had I was in Telemundo, in Univision. Um, I was also uh, there was also some other oh, Bocero, Primera Hora, like newspapers. Like mm. uh, there was a lot of things going on. Um, and it was amazing too that I got picked up at the airport by the official government cars and I was taken to um, the house of our governor um, and I had lunch there with the, with our first lady <laughs> oh, um, nice. so and they made a whole menu for me so it was amazing like the menu even had my name um, mm -hmm. definitely it was something that I was not expecting but it was amazing and it's kind of like strange to sometimes even get recognized on the street or hanging out so um definitely was a good thing and then of course like with uh uh puerto rico like having a new queen and everything and then we only had the miss uh earth one left um then nelly's one so yeah mm -hmm. i feel amazing being part of the history and like it was amazing to to add all that attention you would say when i arrived how did so your, Supra is now more known here. How did your parents or your whole family react to your winning the Miss Supranational title? So my dad is the most uh, emotional one. <laughs> He's the most uh, emotionally attached to me. I'm a daddy's girl. Um, and as soon as I called him back, when I got battery in my phone and I was in my room, <laughs> um, he was crying. He started oh. crying and he was just like screaming. Um, then I spoke with my mom and she was also very happy. Um, they were both ecstatic and very sad that they were not able to be there. Um, oh. But things happen, I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were super happy. My dad even made a banner and put it where, where we live, like uh. at the entrance. They lived in a closed, <laughs> in a closed gate of... Uh, uh, place and he put the banner in the front so everyone that drives by could have seen it. A very proud dad you have there. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm curious to ask because we always see the glamorous side of uh, being a queen but what do you think for in your experience was the hardest part about being Mr. Pranashagal? Like the challenging one. 
well. To me, it was ma doing my makeup every day. No, really. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, of course, was Andre <laughs> helping you with your makeup? <laughs> no, I, no. <laughs> No, just kidding. <laughs> no, no. Um, definitely. Well, no. Like out of besides being a joke, um, it definitely was one of the things that was a little bit harder for me because I had to learn throughout the way. Um, it mm -hmm. was I was not as um good maybe as I am now when I first won. I mean, you can see my makeup from my night, my winning night. It was like, <laughs> but <laughs> did you definitely way, before we go um, there, um, Valeria? Were did you do your own makeup? for the night or yeah you, oh, you did your own okay yeah i decided to do it myself yeah no continue continue <laughs> um so um but i think the most uh the hardest thing about being supra and maybe not only about being supra just in general about being a beauty queen is trying to be always it's perfect um and like if, even if you wake up in the wrong side of the bed or moody or something or even if you feel bad um you have to just pretend that everything is fine and just with a big smile forget about everything that's happening and just go on and work <laughs> um but yeah because actually even even in vietnam um I, I i was i don't know if you know but in my trip to vietnam i got sick um we were in a press conference and i got sick there I had shivers and everything. And Andre was saying, let's take you to the hospital. And I was like, no, we need to do this. <laughs> um, but after all, they, they took me away because I was like already like feeling too bad. Um, but yeah, definitely it's that having to keep up like with an image and like all happy, all past positive all the way, all the time, even though if you're not feeling like it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Drew, can we read some questions from the fans yeah. right now? Yeah, I'm actually reading some of the comments and then there's this one named uh, Stephen Vu and he said, I swear if she has short hair, I thought she was Denise Quinones. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you look like. And I'm, I, I'm now seeing the, the resemblance. I've actually gotten that before. I personally don't see it that much, but thank you because I think Denise is gorgeous. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, we also have a question here from a fan um, from Ana Paula Cepedis, Miss ah, Supranational so Paraguay 2018. Her question yeah. is Do you miss her being your roommate? Of course, she knows I do. <laughs> she knows I do. I think, um, you know, how when you're in like beauty pageants and everything and you're getting ready. They usually tell you to like be very careful with your stuff and like don't trust your roommate because you never know who can like um maybe cut a dress or like do something to your stuff but with Ana Paula like from day one it was like we were the best of friends like it we had so much um confidence in each other that even at like the second or third day our our luggage we wouldn't put the locks on it because it was like what ifs um, so we got along very, very well. Even now, every now and then we write to each other and she even like sends hello to my parents and I send hello back to hers. <laughs> so mm -hmm. she's amazing and I do miss her. You, I'm you just curious, her? who's your best friend from Asia? Sorry. Uh, from, from Asia? <laughs> from Asia. what? what, what? Who's your from best Asia? friend among Asian? Yes, yes. Among, among Asian Asia? candidates. Um, I got along a lot with Jessa and with uh, Wilda. Oh, Philippines. Yeah. Okay. Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia. Mm -hmm. no, yes. I, was, I was just asking if you had a chance to meet with Anna after Miss Supranational. Not yet, though. Okay. Well, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we've talked about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was traveling a lot with Supra and now when I'm finally based home, I was studying and then suddenly coronavirus decided to appear, so. <laughs> That's true. Okay. I read another com comment here. Uh, his name is Joselo and he said, proud Dio. Ah, that's a Dio. <laughs> <laughs> That's a feel de las reinas. Um, he is a very good um, beauty pageant page here in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. He supports all the queens all the time. And he was actually from all the pages in Puerto Rico since day one, as he knew that I was Mr. Supernational in Puerto Rico. He said, you are going to win. I was like, wow. You think so? Yes, <laughs> you are going to win. And Miguel chose a very good candidate. I was like, um, well, thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, yeah. I, I, and, and, yes, true. yes, Amir. Yeah. Uh, and related related to that, there there was a question that I got in, on Instagram last night, and th- the question goes like, "How does it feel to be part of the history of the beauty queens of Puerto Rico?" It's amazing. It's crazy too to think that we have so many queens. Um, I mean, of course, I know we are the island of enchantment. So hello, <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> but um, definitely it feels amazing to even think that I am part of all of that. Um, I'm part of like five grand queens. And like, even if you count the other pageants, like how they say like the seven other, uh, like the seven queens, um, it's crazy. It's crazy to see that we have crowns in every single pageant. <laughs> yeah, for a very small island in the Caribbean, you have probably the most number of crowns per land area, you know, per square meters. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite a feat, you know. I'm so impressed about Puerto Ricans, about Puerto Rico in general, because you know you're really very small island out there, and you have produced like so many winners. And it's one one sash name that we always look forward to in every pageant, you know, be it Miss Universe, Miss Supranational, Miss World, Miss 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 International. It's really a very strong sash. Yeah, yeah. Yes. pageant will that. Pageant will never be complete without Puerto Rico. I know, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's true. I agree with Amir. It's not complete. Because I remember in 2017, we didn't have a Puerto Rican delegate in Miss International because of Hurricane Maria. Yeah. So it was really very sad because, you know, you just won in 2014, but 2017, there was no Puerto Oh, Rican I think delegate. that one was Beverly, right? Well, yeah. Beverly was supposed to go. To go, but she wasn't able to go. It was really unfortunate. But yeah. Yeah. But, it's really sad not to have Puerto Rico in the roster of delegates. Actually, I think that um, Supra had a Puerto Rico that year because um, Larissa, which was the one that went, and was leaving in New York. She yeah, was, she was living yeah. in New York. So yeah. she was out of all the mess and they were they managed to send her. Um, yeah. So yeah, and I, and I think the only girl that was here in Puerto Rico that actually made it out was uh, Brenda for Miss Grand. Um, and it was a mess getting her out of Puerto Rico. Like um, I've heard the stories and it was very hard for, for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I, want, I, I really want to mention it because one of the things that I admired the most in Puerto Rico was that uh, earlier this year, all of the most important queens of the biggest pageants in the world you came together for a fashion show. So yeah. Can you tell us so, more about that? Yes, that's called the Trans Fashion. Um, it's been done, I think, for eight years, if I'm not mistaken. And it pretty much involves all the models that are part of the, of the runway. They are part of the LGBTQ community, not only trans people, but also gays, lesbians, like you name it. They do a casting and they, well, choose their models. Um, so it was amazing. I mean, I'm very close to the LGBTQ community in Puerto Rico. Like I'm always up in their parties and all of their events. Um, I'm actually looking forward for their pride caravana, like in the cars only, um, this year. Um, but yeah, so it was amazing. It was actually a job done by Juan Colon, which is a designer here in Puerto Rico. He knows all of us from the modeling industry. So he just directly contacted us. Um, and insisted because he was like, I, I told him, I can tell you in like three days or so because I'm studying and I don't know what's going to go down by those days. So I'll mm-hmm. let you know. And he was like very insistent. Are you coming? Are you coming? I need you here. I was like, <laughs> okay, yes, I'll go. <laughs> um, so it, it felt super good. Um, and he got Nelly, uh, Stephanie Del Valle, Valerie, uh, Madison, Madison was uh, universe that, yeah, me there. So it, it was very good. And he used us for an, how do you say this? An um, um, not, um, um, homenage. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> to, it, to honor, to honor. <laughs> honor, yeah, thank you. Um, to honor Alexa, which was a trans woman that got killed here in Puerto Rico mm-hmm. a few weeks before that. Um, so they decided to do a whole honoring thing for her for the event and everything and that's why we all in the pictures have like a little mirror with a letter that spelled out her name um 
and because the mirror symbolizes her she always used the mirror to look behind who she had behind um so yeah pretty much that but it was amazing and having all of the girls there was cool you know okay. i have i have to say it was really talked about worldwide that i did not even found out about the news that you were all together in a pageant page i found it out in in the newspaper here in the philippines So that's What? how, yeah, that's how big the reach was of that event. Oh It was a business God. paper, I yeah. <laughs> I want a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, okay. Maybe, maybe okay. I can forward you the link to the to the article. But it wasn't oh, a pageant do. page. I want to see yeah. that. I want to say, hey, I was in a newspaper in Philippines with the rest of the <laughs> queen. <laughs> yeah. Ginger's also a question from a fan. She's, uh, she's so, asking... Um, For Valeria, what are your plans after the pandemic? Well, um, I have to still finish off like three classes I had to put on hold when I actually went to compete. Um, so I have to finish school and complete. But um, I was planning for this summer to go and search for um, agencies via of like in US, in maybe Miami or Los Angeles. So I want to get more into modeling and more into TV and everything. Um, so I gotta work that out. <laughs> that's the mm -hmm. next things on my plans. Um, that's why I was saying that I'm not sure if I want to go to med school because I have a lot of interests just um, outside of being a student and being in med. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the next stage, trying to find out my way in the entertainment industry. Okay, Valeria, what do you miss most about um, Miss Supranational. Andre and Gerhard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both of them. Definitely. Okay. I mean, I still talk with Andre pretty much all the days. Um, and with Gerhard every now and then. But he still, we still talk via Andre anyways. <laughs> um, um, yeah, he's like, Gerhard? Andre sometimes is the messenger. <laughs> I mean, like, do you, want, do you want Gerhard's number? I have his number. <laughs> no, I have it. I have it. <laughs> Oh, okay. it's just that he's not much of a texter he's much of a talker yeah, yeah, and I'm all the yeah. way like yeah, I'm, I'm it, different. Different. yeah. he's like a yeah. dad in relation What? to that um in Sorry, relation to that, that go yeah go, go see fan go see fan no, i just wanted to say that gerhard is like a dad you know like a uh -huh. no definitely the other day he called me um to just see like how i was what was happening literally like last week if i'm not mistaken Um, and then he suddenly asked me about my love life. And I'm like, how am I supposed oh. to do anything about my love life in the pandemic? I'm home. <laughs> yeah. So definitely yeah. he is like a dad. <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask about that because most pageant fans know him as the owner of Mr. Prihashanam, but we do not know how, how it is to work with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is amazing. Um, he doesn't, he, much, most, but, uh, Most pageant followers or pageant fans, yeah, don't know much about Gerhard because he says he doesn't like to be on the spotlight. He's like, mm -hmm. that's why I have a queen. Like, she's the image. Just like, no, not me. Um, but he is amazing. He is very thoughtful. Um, he's very much like a dad. Um, he cares a lot. Uh, I mean, he's a great boss. I really could not have asked for a better boss, to be quite honest. Yeah. Okay. Thank nice you. to know. Really Do sweet. you have more questions? Yeah. And now I think we're now on the home stretch of our um, interview. So now that uh, you've become one of the big, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's a more serious question now. <laughs> so uh, now okay. that you've become, you've become one of the queens of Puerto Rico. So. What advice can you tell young girls who might be watching this and who are uh, interested in joining beauty pageant? Definitely to just, I say a lot, definitely. Anyways, <laughs> um, to just like uh, be very confident about who they are and be very confident about the decision they're making and to be sure that they are ready to pretty much be in the public eye Um, maybe when you're a candidate, it's a little bit um, not as harsh, but when you win, it gets a little bit 
bad. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So you have to be ready for it. You have to have a tough skin, definitely. And, definitely. and <laughs> um, yeah, you just have to trust yourself because a lot of people will try to put you down. A lot of people will say a lot of mean stuff. Um, you will see a lot of hate. It's not always pitch perfect nor a pink world where everything is love. So you have to be tough, be confident, and believe in yourself. Wow. And another question. If there's one thing that you want to change in the way pageants are held in all over the world, what would it be and why? Mm. Wow, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's the final question for Miss Supranational. Yeah, oh, I would have blanked. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, um, wow. So in pageants, I think maybe maybe the hate part. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if that would be the answer. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so not only the hate, but also the, like, the stereotype of beauty queens. I hate the stereotype of beauty queens. I hate that people think that just because I'm a beauty queen, I'm just like um, maybe an airheaded or something like that, or don't do much, or just like do things because yeah, it's what's supposed, like beauty queens are supposed to do like charity and all of that stuff. Um, And they feel entitled to just criticize you all the time. So, Definitely, it would be that. The image of a beauty queen, that's what I want to change. And that's what I was actually trying to work with while I was with Supra. Um, And that's, thank God, the image that they want to change right now. Because Supra has, Supra is going through changes. That's why also their slogan changed to aspirational, inspirational. Because they want much more than just a pretty face or a pretty girl. Um, So, yeah, they, I think I've, participated in the right pageant in the right year to try and get that message out and that would be definitely the 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 thing that i would change the stereotype of queens and i have to say during this interview you have proven that you are not like the pageant happy or the stereotypical beauty queen because yes. we've, we've, wait, wait. No. <laughs> you're not you uh, you've proven during this interview you've proven during this interview that you are not the stereotypical queen. Oh, La, you're, you. <laughs> you're out of the box. And I think Goals you're the perfect, uh, <laughs> yeah, you were, you were the perfect, um, how do I say this, representation of the rebranding of Mr. Pranational. <clears throat> yes, indeed you are. Thank you. I mean, I'm very, like I said, I'm very grateful that I participated the year I participated um, mm-hmm. and that I was a there at the moment because I helped them throughout the changes that they wanted to. Um, I worked a lot like trying to work, change that image with Andre um, and thank God we were aligned in the same um, image or um, brand you would say. So I definitely was in the right moment at the right time. <laughs> yeah, um, Bong is actually asking right now aside from being having a pre- pretty face Oh, yeah, you know Bong, right? I mean, aside from having yeah, pretty face, Bong. what is your beauty secrets? <laughs> beauty secrets? Um, well, <laughs> I don't use that much makeup, to be very honest. I am more of a natural um, girl all the time. I just decided to do my hair and makeup today because I found it like an amazing opportunity to practice since I have an interview with you guys. <laughs> but during the whole day, um, I try to be as natural as possible because I feel like if you wear a lot of makeup, that just like deteriorates your skin. And my mom always taught me that if you wear makeup all the time, then when you actually do wear makeup for something that you want to impress people for, um, then it won't do anything because they see you like that all the time. Um, so I think that definitely that, and I am very, very um, picky with uh, like how my skin is supposed to look. Since I'm always natural, I like to do a lot of like cleansings and like masks and uh, hydrate my skin and drink water to keep it healthy. So I think just the basics, but I think that not, not wearing that much, much makeup helps a lot. I just okay, have to mention... The, the screen behind Stephen is now showing your crowning moment. Crowning moment. I think you guys all froze for a second. 
Okay. Uh, the the screen card. behind Stephen is now showing the your crowning moment. I'm gonna show it this way. Hey, I have to speak oh. so that if I don't speak, then uh, it won't show. No, it's uh, here at the background. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I have a question related to that. So, how has uh, Mr. Pranational changed your life? Well, for sure, all the traveling I did um, showed me a lot. Definitely the girl. Oh, my God. I have to stop saying definitely. <laughs> the girl that started up <laughs> the year as Miss Supernational um, Puerto Rico and then won the crown is not the girl that you're talking with right now, even though it sounds like a cliche. It's very much true. Um, I traveled a lot and I feel like when you travel, you grow because you feel you find yourself in other environments and other uh, cultures and you just meet a lot of new things that just make you grow as a person so I think that all the traveling that I did and and meeting all the people that I met throughout the traveling um, changed me to be a better person and a much more knowledgeable much more um, tolerant person for sure and now okay. I'd like to pass I would I'd like to pass the mic to Stephen, who always asks this question. Just ask this question to all of the beauty queens that we interview here. Like because this is something that I that I really enjoy knowing, you know. How do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Well, if everything goes well, um I would I'm I'm up for every single opportunity that I can find in, in entertainment. But I would definitely love to try something on TV. Because um, as you can see, I love talking. <laughs> um, so definitely, uh, oh, sh definitely, God. <laughs> um, Your first movie the... entitled Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so um, I would love to see myself, or I wish I could I see myself. <laughs> um on tv and with a better modeling career and of course while well, finishing finally my studies in medical technology and certified with a license and everything okay so, to I wish that all of those dreams of yours will come true come and true. with your bilingual very good bilingual background i think you'll you are on the right track into becoming a star in the United States, you know, hopefully Hollywood will knock their doors on you. Knock, knock on not, not the other, <laughs> not the other way around. You knocking your door to Hollywood, but it's Hollywood knocking their door on you. You know. Okay, I also have a question for um, Valeria. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay, now aside from 